awakened mind here that literally has, has transcended the ego entirely. And so, I mean, that's what makes it such a powerful tool, is that it's so clear. That's also why there's such enormous resistance to working with it, because the ego is very resistant to it, because it's like it's so... If you say it's a tool, it's a very sharp tool <laughs> for cutting away and dissolving the deceptions. And at the bottom of it, um, it's kind of like time would be like time and space are at the very bottom floor of the World Trade Center. But those are things that when people wake up in the morning for their 6.30 meetings or get to get together to go to work or whatever, usually the, the mind is not at a place where it's questioning linear time or it's questioning space. You know, usually it's, it's off already on its plan of action, so to speak, you know, in pursuing so on and so forth. So what the Course does is, is it literally works it down from relationship issues to, you know, basically all the way down to the issue of, of time. And there, is, there hasn't been a lot of psychoanalysis or in any psychotherapy gestalt, and there have been a number of them that have kind of talked about living in the present. You know, present moment, but it have, they haven't gone quite so deeply into how do you, how do you live in the present? How do you undo the belief in, in time and space? Um. So, what I want to do now, I mean, okay, we've got the metaphysics down, and that's what the idea is, okay? My life, I don't believe that you can just talk about this stuff and read about it, you've got to live it. And my life has been literally a process of, of, ra of going down and raising this stuff, and literally, um, coming to the point where I've examined concepts and literally stepped out of them. Once I could see what they were, then I could say, well, this is, I'm not this. I'm not this. It's kind of like, I'm not this. <laughs> you keep going, I'm not this. And to, and to literally start to move ourselves to a point where it's like, you know, stepping out, just trusting that things will be provided and letting the Spirit come through. But, but what we want to do is, if you have issues or you have things that are going on in your life, is to try to, to come together and let the Spirit come amongst us to try to get some clarity on those. Because we have a metaphorical framework now. We've got a, a, a basic kind of an agreement on some of the metaphysics, but now we want to really try to, to put it into application. How do we live in the now? How do we actually apply this so that we're not into you know, planning for the future and worrying about the past? And how do we get into the, into the present? Well, the concepts, in other words, um, when we have concepts of ourselves, remember we said that there was a, a God substitute made, or a substitute self made in place of the Christ, and basically that's what the self-concept is. So the self-concept, Jesus says, that this is the purpose of the learning of the world, that everyone comes here without a self and makes one as he goes along. And that's kind of our experience in this world, you know. We learn things, whether we think we learn from our parents or we learn them at school. We learn, we learn how to judge, you know. These are the good things in life. These are the things that will make you secure and safe. These are the bad things in life. These are the things you need to avoid. And basically that's all part of the ego system. That the judgment that we learn in this world is to which things to pursue, which things to avoid, is still um, part of the defense system of trusting in the holy instant that the spirit can, can do it. So, in this world, mature judgment is someone who has learned the ways of the world very well. And Jesus comes along and he says, wait a minute, what, 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 what wisdom is, is, is relinquishment of judgment. And that can be unsettling when you've put your faith and your forte is, is having come here and learned to be a good judge of the good things and the bad things, to start to see, oh my gosh, my whole system of good things and bad things is still part of the ego system. Actually, um, that, that good and bad stuff is, is all on the outside. Within us, it's kind of neutral, isn't it? There, is, there, there really isn't any any good or bad. It's, just, it's neutral, and it's how we have applied it, how how we have judged it. The thoughts we have judgment thoughts. Yeah. And I'm thoughts. talking about actions. No, we're not necessarily. I mean, um, 
it, it, we're talking about we're back to that hierarchy of illusions. In other words, um, you could you could be actions, but it could be um, the weather, good weather and bad weather. Okay. You know, like sunny or cloudy. It, it, any kind of of an evaluation in a positive or a negative way um, literally denies that everything is equally illusory. So so. That's where it comes in. And what the Course is saying is, is like you've constructed a maze of, with from all your judgments, you've got a maze of complexity going here. And the Holy Spirit is your guide now. He's going to guide you out of the maze. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, is evaluative. In other words, the Holy Spirit does judge. But he is capable of judging truly because he can see the past, the present, the future. Think of, think of when you're trying to judge in the maze. Do we have cognition of the past and the future? Do we know the, the results of every decision that we make, how it will affect everyone else? The, the Course is saying not that we shouldn't judge. Jesus is saying you can't. You aren't capable of accurately judging. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so, in that sense, the Holy Spirit is judgmental. So it's like in a maze, you know, you know you can only go left or right at every point that we have all these seeming decisions to make and that the Holy Spirit is in there guiding us. Go left, go right, go left. <laughs> he knows. He knows the way out of the maze. But how about when, when someone who is evil is affecting you? Affecting your life and everything wrong? I'm serious. Yeah. That's an illusion too. But that's, what, that's a good thing to go into. I've been working <laughs> the... the, the, the <laughs> lessons now. Yeah. I could tell you a story yeah. if I talk more than five minutes. Shut me up. Oh, go ahead. That'd be great. About a year ago, I went into business with this man, um, 24 years old, has the ability to make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. He is, in my eyes, evil. He has the ability. He has power. I've been reading this uh, Charles Fillmore, and I believe that he has power in his voice. He can walk into a room and just steal your blind, and you won't even know it. Got into business with this guy. Um, with all these big expectations, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make millions, right? And uh, come to find out, this guy is the biggest crook I've ever met in my life. It's, it's got me all upset. Um, what's going on right now is he wants to sue me. I, you know, I feel in my heart I did nothing wrong. He's the one that wronged me. <laughs> He's the one that wronged me. Um, It's, it's crazy. Uh, and now you've picked up The Course in Miracles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you like it, that. My goodness. I mean, there's... Uh, um, what we're getting, and what I'm hearing, too, is that you know, you're feeling the tension, you're mm -hmm. feeling the fears, you're feeling the frustrations, the angers, and everything. And what The Course literally helps us do is Jesus comes right out and says, you have no idea of the extent of the hatred that's in your own mind. And that literally, this is a course in unveiling the extent. What happens with that is that, like we were saying before, with this intolerable split in the mind, this intolerable hatred, is that, that it does, that's the way that the ego deals with it. It wants to protect it. I mean, that's, this whole idea of evil out in the world, or a devil, or a force, is something I'm sure that we've all considered at one point. And Jesus addresses the devil, he calls it the devil in the course, and he says that the that the devil is, is a, seems to be very active, very powerful, and very destructive. And that literally he turns around and says that that is the ego, that is the belief in your own mind. Kind of like Gandhi's thing about, you know, they asked Gandhi about the devil one time, and he said, well, the only devils that are running around are, are those running around in our own hearts, you know. And it, but it sure seems, I mean, it, it can seem once the in this projection, it can seem like there are evil forces and everything around us, but now you've picked up a book that's going to be telling you and literally teaching you systematically. It's already released me, like I say, within eight lessons, um, because it, this had me literally paralyzed. The situation I'm in right now is that uh, is a place that I don't particularly care for, um, but I'm, I've come to it uh, I go to it, I should say, with the idea of learning. And, and this place that I'm working in a, in a factory setting is, is the, 
well, I don't know what you want to call it, the universal mind's way or the, the higher consciousness or God's way of saying, Mark, this is, this is what you believe about yourself. And the only way to learn about who you are is to experience it right out in front of you. And that's what I had a thought about, about your experience, that sometimes the things we, we don't like about ourselves, we, uh, the thought I had was, if you didn't, if you thought that the situation you were in, well, you wouldn't be sitting here for one thing, you, you, would, you would think that that particular person was it, and you wouldn't be seeing the discrepancy. And sometimes we're shown the very things that we need to learn about ourselves right in our very experience. And I was thinking, I said, wow, well, how great that is. That, you know, that I, and I'm aware of that, you know, that I'm aware that, that, that um, this, is, this is who I perceive myself to be, and I'm getting the opportunity to learn more about myself so I can go beyond that. It's too, we talk about this idea that our brothers are mirrors for us. And these unconscious things, I mean, that's why the Course is, a, is such a, a strong path of, of using relationships to, to flush or flush this stuff up because it's unconscious. And people a lot of times will say, well, wait a minute now, I, I can see that mirroring thing to a certain point, but I've got, you know, they'll say, I've got witnesses and, witnesses and examples that it only goes so far. They'll say, like, for example, you know, I know a person who's, who's very sloppy and lazy, and I am not sloppy and lazy. <laughs> and I don't care what the Course says, you know. But what the Course is saying, it goes, it's not a be at the behavioral level. In other words, it's not a mirroring that takes place, but it's a mirroring that goes back to our beliefs. In other words, if we do judge somebody as being sloppy or lazy or whatever, that there is a box that we have, a sloppiness I'm box. Sloppy and lazy. A lazy box. And we have a certain group of behaviors that we put together in there, and we read it onto the screen, and we go, ah, there, you know? And what Jesus is kind of saying is, you've got to go back into your mind and kind of look at these boxes that you've constructed. And we've got lots of boxes. I mean, that's what the ego system is. It's judgments and categories and boxes. You know, it goes male, female, and, and in business there's a lot of boxes too, you know? Because the ego is so tied in on appearances. The more you go into the course, the more it's like th that to let go of relying so much on our physical senses, on what we see and hear, and to start to trust this intuitive voice, because we, we're fooled and deceived by what our eyes see and what these ears hear. But it's fun to be on a path and start to say, oh, thank you, now I'm going to let go of some of my judgments and start listening and opening to my intuition. So that's, our, that's literally our, our safety and our joy and our happiness. It's great that you can just be, it's like, it seems like it's all coming right up there. <laughs> you know, you're not stuffing it. It's more, you're definitely not stuffing it. It's like a volcano. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm uh, not that kind of situation, but I have a person in my life that's going through these kind of reactions. And I'm listening to him, and I think, why can't you see what's really going on? You know, and I really tried to explain to him what's really going on. He said, you can't do that. <laughs> so what, and then all of a sudden, I got caught up in it. And I was, re instead of seeing him, up, you know, through love, instead of um, differently, you know, just seeing <coughs> that he's the son of God, like I am the son of God. And I love that term. It, it's just so nice because it keeps us all the same. Except I forget. I started by, and then I was doing the same thing, and it took a couple days for some of the things that I learned to catch up, and, and I was acting out of fear. You see, I couldn't change him, because all of a sudden I said, I want to change him, and why couldn't he see what he was doing, because he was seeing all this bad, and, I, and I'm trying to, hey man, you're missing the point, you know? Yeah. We don't judge, because what we see, you know, it's not real anyhow, and I'm on, it didn't work. We had a question last night, we did a gathering north of here in Lansing, and the, the question came up, like you were just saying, about getting frustrated, starting to see things more clearly, and yet the frustration of like, can't, saying to another person, can't you see this? So. <laughs> And, and the, Jesus talks about that in the beginning of the text, where he basically says that you've so much, in the past you have so much suppressed and denied the ego system, that in a sense it was like, well, so-and-so is going through their stuff, but that's just the way everyone is, you know. It's kind of like it's so denied that it hasn't been raised to awareness. But once you start to raise the ego to awareness, that then, and the stuff starts getting flushed up, then the tendency is to want to project. There's, there's a strong tendency to want to project. Because, even though now it's being unveiled and you're seeing it, the mind is still very strongly invested in it. 
and that's where the guilt comes in. In other words, the transcendence will eventually come where we're able to